Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. My name is Reverend Michael Schoonover and I am the minister here at Unity Way Church in beautiful, beautiful Vista, California. I welcome you to our YouTube channel. Our opening affirmation is from Wings of Prayer and it's from Daily Word, July the 24th, 1931. Abiding in the presence of God, you become impregnated with the power of stillness. Just invite you to allow that divine idea of stillness, which really is peace, being in the silence. It's so important that we create that space within our own soul consciousness so we truly can show up as the divine beings we have been created to be and live during this incarnation. You New Way Church is a metaphysical church, which means we study consciousness, which means we affirm only one power, only one presence, only one substance, and really only one divine idea of stillness, which is really, truly absolute peace. And that's something we came in with. We don't have to find it outside. We go within. That's where we touch the presence of God in us and as us. And if you believe that high truth understanding with me, I invite you to use a mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now here is Mickey with our daily word. Good morning. The word for today is free. And the affirmation is, I am one with the freeing, guiding force of God. When I think of freedom, I imagine a bird in flight soaring above the earth. As the bird glides, it seems to effortlessly move through the air. Then it flaps its wings, moving upward and forward against the force of gravity. Likewise, I open my mind and heart and feel the freeing force of God within me. This force is powerful and peaceful, and I give myself over to it. As I do, I overcome stifling feelings of stress or doubt. I trust in God, and I move forward and upward with the renewed purpose and confidence. Just as a bird overcomes gravity to fly with purpose, I overcome the challenges and circumstances of my life to find my purpose and live from my divine nature. I am free. And from Hebrews 13, verse 6, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? And again, I affirm, I am one with the freeing, guiding force of God. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. And a perfect divine word freeing today. We want to feel that freedom. We want to know that freedom because when we know that freedom, we can again show up in our own shoes and our own souls the way we truly want to show up. Right now, back at Unity Village in the St. Unity Chapel, there is a person holding this sacred high watch, a prayer worker. 
that Silent Unity Chapel since 1890 has been a, a very sacred place, a sacred zone where people are holding the belief in truth and answered prayer. God is blessing us now. And that's truly what Silent Unity stands for. And our prayer claims are back there also. By the power of truth, I'd like to take some of that energy that's in the Silent Unity Chapel back in Missouri and take some of that energy and bring it forth into this sanctuary where I am. And as it permeates this room and goes out over our property to wherever you may be, wherever you may be, or whenever you do hear this lesson, know that you're blessed. Know that you are in the stillness and know that freedom truly is your divine birthright. And we just know that to be so. And we just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for blessing us now. And we just say, amen. Well, I picked a very interesting comic for you, and I think you'll like it. My talk this morning is on paradoxes, and it shows two, uh, two landings out on a lake, and the, the caption says paradox. There are two of them. Of course, there are two boat ramps you could call also. You know that is funny. They're not exactly the same, but it is a paradox. We'll be talking about what paradoxes are and what they can mean to our life when we use them as metaphysical tools. From my minister's joke page, a priest uh, went out and bought a new lawnmower, it was a used lawnmower, at a uh, yard sale. Back at home, the priest pulled the starter rope a few times with no results. The priest stormed back to the yard sale to tell the owner that I can't get this mower to start. This thing is a lemon. Uh, the man replied, you have to curse the lawnmower when you pull it, when you pull the rope. The priest was stunned. He says, I'm a man of the cloth. I don't even remember how to curse anything. What are you talking about? And the yard sale man who has sold him the lawnmower said, hey, listen to this. You just keep cussing and pulling that rope and you will know all that old way of thinking and cussing will come back to you, I guarantee you. And you know that is so funny. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Stay in your chairs. Put your shoes back on. This is not a sock hop. Put your shoes back on. Laughter is good for the soul. Soul paradoxes. One of the things when you study metaphysics, the concept of uh, understanding paradoxes, we're going to be discussing that this morning and how we can maybe use this idea of paradoxes to strengthen our understanding of our own divinity, but also to better understand how we can use metaphysical ideas or tools to truly shape the life we want to live. The word paradox comes from a Latin word and it's paradoxum. Uh, which is a it's defined as a statement seemingly absurd yet really true and that's kind of what a paradox means when you think about paradoxes the first thing in metaphysics we think about our souls what is a soul philosophy the soul we can't see it we can't taste it we can't touch it we, we, we say we have a soul, it's kind of like a paradox. In most religion, or most all religious traditions, there is the belief that the soul is immaterial. It's the immaterial ac uh, aspect of our essence or our human being. Again, it's that paradox, we're both human and divine. We're both the image and the likeness. And there's a paradox in that understanding. In layman terms, the soul is the spiritual essence of each person. It's our identity. It's our personality. It's our memories. And uh, we believe that uh, we take these memories with us when we transition out of this third dimensional world, meaning that our memories survive. We physically, when we, trans, uh, we, we transition, or death as you want to call it, because we know there's no death, that's a paradox too. God only knows life. In my research, I found that a paradox is really reasoning from two acceptable premises that seem to contradict each other. But when investigated, they prove to be true. A paradox would be the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Well, we know the sun doesn't rise, the sun doesn't move. The earth rotates. So it's a, it's a paradox. But from our third dimensional way of thinking and seeing with our senses, it appears that the moon, uh, the moon, but the sun is really tra uh, traveling over, uh, over our head as it goes to the west. I believe we need to embrace, as students of truth, the mysteries of our souls. And there is a paradoxical nature that is in that. 
Animals have a soul, as do humans. Most uh, of your spiritual people, enlightened people say, and they're made up of electrons and chemical brain reactions. So they have a different type of brain, but they have the ability to think and to reason, which seems paradoxical because it doesn't seem like animals would understand our language, but they seem to. So again, that's this idea. And I think we need to become comfortable living in a state of paradox. This is from the Jewish scriptures. This is the great book of Psalms. This is Psalms 34, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Taste and see. That's a paradox. You can't taste God. You can't even see God. Faith is hope and substance not seen. Again, that's a paradox. And what you find in truth is there's a lot more paradoxes when we start really thinking about it. And again, it allows us to stretch our way of thinking, stretch our reasoning. It allows us to come out of our edemic understanding of truth. Our spirit knows that we cannot die, nor are we really born. See, we don't die and we're really not born. Uh, we live in eternity now, and that is the knowledge that we seek, and it's the knowledge we want to remember. This is from Ralph Waldo Emerson. The soul raised over passion beholds identity and eternal causation, perceives the self-existence of truth and right, and calms itself with knowing that all things go well. See, again, that's that paradox. No matter what we're going through, no matter what we have experienced, we can still have our composure. We can still know that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. To be human is divine. To be divine is human. Again, that's a seeming paradox. Socrates taught his students that our souls are immortal. This is not a new concept. And he believed, Socrates taught his students, that we are immortal and we can even contemplate uh, even after our soul is separate, uh, separates from our body. So that means it can, when we separate, when we transition, our body stays in this dimension. Our idea of our body goes with us, though. And, that seem, and again, that seems like a paradox. What are memories? What's the past? What's the future? And that's that idea of paradox thinking. Uh, there are soul powers, and they're separate from our ego, our ego intellect. Uh, we recognize the marvels that we are created with as truly God in expression, because we are God in expression as us right here and right now. And again, that's a paradox too. We're God in expression. We're God in expression. We're the expression of God. I mean, that's a paradox. And what we want to learn in truth is what does that mean to us today? How can we apply these concepts to our life? So even though we're going through a seemingly tough situation, we have a flat tire, it's a good thing because we got the flat tire now. It didn't happen later when we were driving on the road or when we had to go to a special appointment. That's a seeming paradox. Again, from Ralph Waldo Emerson. We live in succession in division, in parts and particles. Meantime within man is the soul of the whole. See, we're really a hologram. It seems that we're separate. It seems that we're not together, but we live in divine mind, a paradox kind of like a fish living in the ocean or the sea, or a fish living in a lake. As long as it's in that environment, it doesn't really know that it's not there. It takes it for granted. Again, that's paradoxical thinking. The quickening within us, as we remember our divinity, is the Christ, that divine mind, sometimes called the superconsciousness. It amplifies our powers. That's what paradoxical thinking can do. It can amplify our perceptions. It increases our reasoning capacity, our understanding, love, and happiness. And these qualities continue to develop and unfold within us. We need more understanding. We need more understanding of love. We need more wisdom. And we get that from thinking out of the box, stretching our thinking. The minister uh, J. Sig Paulson used to call them mind stretchers. And really mind stretchers are, again, paradoxical thinking. And they're tools that we can use to stretch, to stretch where we are and how we're perceiving our world or observing our world around us. This is from the Aramaic scholar Araco Erico. All kingdoms on earth have territorial limits. 
The heavenly kingdom is a spiritual domain, and it is not ruled over by human beings. Again, that's a paradox. We talk about heaven. We talk about earth. We talk about what we do as uh, humanity, what we control, the seas we control, uh, where we can build. It's paradoxical because we're also living at the same time in an idea of an ideal earth, an ideal heaven, because when we change our thinking, we bring these ideas into our conception. Consciousness is what allows us to live in this idea of paradox, both seeming to be true depending on where we are in our understanding. Our soul accumulates many ideas, and it really brings us back into the expression. The ancients always would say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And that's paradoxical. That's paradoxical. Many times, even like tithing, you would think, as I get, then I'll give. But see, no, it's as I give, then I shall receive. See, again, that's paradoxical. Again, we have a lot of these paradoxes in our life, uh, these thoughts, but we just don't really give them much uh, time to think about. And I believe we need to take them into our prayer time so we can really expand, expand our own understanding of who and what we are. This is from R. E. Uh, e. Eugene Nichols. Our relationship with the universe is not a time relationship. It is a timeless one. It exists in the now. See, again, this is the thing, this, again, this paradoxical thinking. We believe we live in time. But in the th uh, fourth dimension, there is no time-space continuum. It's paradoxical. It doesn't seem to make sense. But in this third dimension, we go through these, this, this time. We go through the clock. We go through the 24 hours. We go through the seven days a week. But really, is Sunday really any different than Wednesday? It's really the same day. We've just named it differently. Again, that's a paradoxical way of thinking. As students of truth, we want to utilize life's paradoxes now to the fullest of possibilities within us, which means we need to better understand who we are. We need to better understand the super consciousness within us, the potential, the potential of really growing and expanding truly as the beings who want to be here have the good relationships, have the life experiences that we choose. We're not victims. We're not victims or martyrs. One of the uh, ideas that I received or when I was studying or doing my research was a pure soul means a sense of self is untainted and uncorrupted by the bad air happenings of the world. See, again, that's paradoxical. You know, we get in a car accident or we have something that breaks. How could there be good in that? It's paradoxical thinking again. How are we going to use this? We, dr we broke this glass. The glass shattered on the floor. Are we going to allow this glass to control our day? Are we going to be miserable? I'm not saying you want to be happy you broke the glass. But again, are you going to respond or are you going to react? Again, that's paradoxical thinking. Again, that's living in the paradox. Or as the ancient mystics would say, living in the mystery of life. I'd like to share a story with you that brings this out. And this is a Zen story. A Zen priest was in charge of a very famous garden temple. Uh, his job was to care for all the flowers, the shrubs, and all the trees. Next to this temple was another smaller Zen temple where a very old Zen master lived. One day the priest was expecting some very special guests. So he took extra care in tending to the garden. He pulled all the weeds. He trimmed the shrubs. He combed the moss even. He wanted that garden to look perfect. He spent a long time meticulously raking up and carefully arranging all the dry autumn leaves in one pile. As he worked, the older master in the temple next door watched him with great interest from across the wall that separated the two temples. And we'll come back to that story. This is from Frank B. Whitney, the original editor of Our Daily Word. When we look heavenward, the very forces of heaven rush to our aid. Again, that's paradoxical. What does it mean to look heavenward? Does it mean to gaze up at the star? To gaze, could mean gazing up. But it really is gazing into potential, gazing into the possibility of spirit, gazing into the realization that we truly can choose again how we're going to show up in our life experiences and our relationships. The body is the soul's outer expression. 
Bodily health is exact. There's exact correspondence between the soul's health. So anyone who is a little bit psychic or clairvoyant or reads auras will always tell you before our body appears to be sick, the disease or the frustration or the anger or the upsetness will be seen in our aura because it's the aura that's controlling the energies that originally, that really penetrate our body. And again, that seems paradoxical. Not everyone can see auras. Some can, some can't. That doesn't mean they don't exist. We just are not at that same vibration to see them. And again, this is a paradoxical way of thinking. So when we are sick again in our body, it's because our aura is already holding that negative energy. That is truly the way metaphysics thinks. What about a soul awakening? How can a soul awake if we're already immortal? One of the things that happens to really cause us to wake up are big life changing events, the passing um, of someone we love with a serious illness. A divorce can also trigger a spiritual waking as any traumatic near-death life experiences. And you say, that's paradoxical. Why would I have to go to the edge of something, edge of thinking I'm going to die, or the edge of this collision that could happen? How could that help me to grow and expand? Paradoxically, because usually when an event like that happens, it so gets our attention that we become still. We really start living in the now moment and realize I'm not really living my life. I'm allowing others' ideas and thoughts from the world around us or what I was trained to think or what tr was I trained to believe, and I'm allowing that to control my life. I need to get off that train. And paradoxical thinking can get us on a healthy train, a train of truth, a train of prosperity. This is from Tyan Dayton. Resilience is not the ability to escape unharmed. It is the ability to thrive in spite of the odds. That's paradoxical again. Again, resilience. Resilience shows up when we're in tough situations. You know, there's an idea in history is that does history create great, great men and women? Or does, do great men and women create history? Again, it's paradoxical thinking. I believe it's a little bit of both. Resilient people, we all are resilient people when we tap into our divinity. We can grow, but seemingly even if we grow, we still can carry emotional, psychological scars from our childhood or our life experiences. So we need to be aware of that. And so those scars, again, paradoxically, can help us really to take charge of what's going on in our consciousness. Because many times, again, we're like Mr. Magoo. We're just going through the motion, going through the motion, going through the motion, going through the motion. That's really not living in a consciousness where these paradoxes can truly expand our mind. Again, the soul exists. It is an immaterial substance. It is not subject to the decomposition materials of things. Again, that's it's paradoxical. Dualists will agree that the soul is identical or identified also as the mind, and yet it is different from the brain in how it functions. You see, the brain does not secrete ideas like the liver secretes bile. You know, the brain doesn't cause us to think. It's our soul consciousness. It's that mystery of consciousness that allows us to think. And we use our brain. It's used as a tool and a function. But our brain does not cause us to think. Only consciousness can do that. And now back to that Zen story with the two Zen monks. When the priest was finally finished cleaning up the beautiful garden, he stood back and admired all his work. Uh, it's beautiful, called the older Zen master from the wall. Yes, it is, responded the priest. But the older priest said, but, but there's something missing. Help me over the wall and I'll put it all right for you. After hesitating, the younger priest lifted the older priest uh, over the wall. Slowly but slowly, the master walked up to the center of the tree, which in the, was in the center of the garden, and he grabbed the trees. He grabbed more than one tree was there, and he shook it and shook it and shook it and shook it. Leaves showered down all over the garden everywhere that were also picked up in the wind. There, says the old Zen monk, you can now put me back over the wall now. It's perfect. And what I love about Zen stories is, again, there's that paradox. 
You know, the one, the one idea of the priest was to rake it all up and it's beautiful like botanical gardens. But the other side of Zen thinking is also the opposite. Having the leaves fall over, that's the natural course. We might not like it, but there's a natural order in that also. Again, it's paradoxical. I think we have more paradoxes in our life if we take, uh, really take into account what's really going on with us. This is Chuck Pinelnik. The greatest weapon any warrior can carry into battle is absolute certainty of her eternal soul. We are souls, and through our souls we express in our body temple. And even though this body temple is left in this third dimensional world, the images and the feelings and the emotions will travel with us in our soul. So this body image will travel with us. Again, that's paradoxical thinking. It doesn't make sense. How could if the body stays here? How could it travel with us when we go on into the fourth dimension or another incarnation? Again, it's very paradoxical. Which means the great mystic question is, where does the soul reside? Many, many mystics have many different ideas. Uh, the soul in Buddhism and Hinduism is called the Atman, and it's uh, credited with the ability to enliven the body, and it's located uh, in different places, in different cultures. Um, there's philosophers that say it's located in our lungs. There's philosophers that say it's, our soul is located in our heart. There's philosophers that say it's located in the penal gland. There's other philosophies that believe that it's in our brain or our solar plexus. See, here's the really metaphysical paradox. It's in all those things, and yet so much more. It's wholeness and oneness. This is from Timothy Leary. You are a powerful, unlimited, and eternal soul who is here to enjoy the experience of creativity and contribute to human uh, humanity's evolution. The idea of evolution is a paradoxical idea again, too. How do we evolve? You know, we come in who we are. Do we really change? Do we play that we change? Do we play the script we were given? Again, that's paradoxical thinking. We should remember that we're divine. We are divine from head to toe. We've always been divine, and we shall always remain divine. There are three different types of souls that I'd like to share with you this morning. And the first one is the, the soul that we're really nurtured. It's that part of us that our soul has a way of nurturing us. When we tap into ourself, we're that God fingertip. We're the God point of expression, that spirit in us and as us. And as we grow and expand, we nourish ourselves. We take on a higher, more mature understanding. The second type of soul is a sensible soul. It's rational. It's rational with the ideas and thoughts that it's using. One of the things you learn in metaphysics or thinking from a fourth dimension, or as Jesus said, a kingdom of heaven consciousness, we get our ideas from a different realm. We get divine ideas and feelings and images, and then we bring them into this earth expression. Again, that allows us to respond instead of reacting. Again, that's a paradoxical idea. And the last one, the third one is a rational soul. And I believe a rational soul is a soul that remembers who it is, who it will always be. And there's a mystery there. But there's a mystery there. We maybe don't understand all of our histories or all of our incarnations, but we know there's something within us that moves on. Again, that's an idea of a paradoxical, a paradoxical way of thinking. Doesn't make sense. You know, if you're not breathing, are you still alive? Again, that's paradox. Our soul is not conditioned on our breath, but the breath does express through us because breath is another word for the Holy Spirit. We have a flame within us, and if it's ever flickering, the ancients would tell us we need to really align with a new purpose. What's your purpose? We're in 2023. We're past the COVID, or seemingly we are. What's your purpose for today? What's your purpose for Sunday? What's your purpose for being a metaphysical student? Do you really want to have Christ consciousness? Do you want to tap into cosmic mind? You can do it, and you can do it with the consciousness you have now. And I'm not saying it doesn't mean you don't pray and meditate, but as you pray and meditate and be still, this will enliven you more. And this is from Unity Minister. Uh, Charles Roth. When you work with God and the spiritual forces 
of the universe, you always come out on top. That's good truth. Are we willing to use the tools that we have? Again, are we, you, are we willing to use this idea of paradoxes? We, are we will, and sometimes you could call them even a riddle that causes us to think. See, most of us think we're original thinkers. Actually, we're not. We regurgitate what we hear. And because we hear it over and over and over and over, that doesn't necessarily mean it's true. And I think many times we tell, us full, our, tell about our own life or our relationships, we tell ourselves false stories. And that's a paradox because if we're divine, we should not be feeding these stories of negativity or stress maybe as much as we do. We need to take some of that energy out. When we tap into paradoxical thinking, we really energize and enliven our life. And I believe, as Charles Fulmer would say, we find joy. And the joy we share with others is amplified, and we combine that with new soul energies and new soul entanglements. Everything that has happened in your life, from the cell from which you were born, which is paradoxical anyway, how could we be born from one cell? How could all of us be in that one cell? Not getting into the DNA. DNA is paradoxical too. And yet here we are. How could that be? If you cut the cell open, you can't see us. Can't see what color our hair is. Can't see how tall we're going to be. Can't tell if we're Irish or Russian. I mean, it's a paradoxical thing. And yet we know it to be so. From that single cell, we become. And when we truly realize the divinity within us, our life changes. We slow down. We put the brakes on our life. We're not running through our life on fast forward. And this is from Frederick Lentz. Your soul wants experience. It wants the world. You are a human and you, uh, you're eternal. The two are the same. Again, this is paradoxical thinking. We want experiences, but we know as good metaphysicians, experiences don't cause us to think. That's not the way it works. We have the ability to have consciousness and then we perceive the world around us. Again, that's one of the great uh, paradoxical understandings, I think, of even consciousness. Really, what is consciousness? You could fill libraries. It means different things at different times for different people. What I want to stress this morning is the paradox is not to keep you in a riddle. A paradox is used to as a mind stretcher, a soul stretcher, to really think deeper, to think wider, go outside the lines, see what spirit wants to share with you this day. And that's really what paradoxical truth thinking can mean to each and every one of us. The paradox is really the goal of our souls because when we live in some idea of paradox, we change who we are, we become healthy, and our responses respond. And in closing, I would like to uh, leave you some wisdom from Midrash, which is Hebrew oral tradition. The Holy One of blessing is pure. So is the soul pure. We are created in the image and likeness of God, which again is a paradox. Let us live in that paradox. Let's accept the divinity. Let's accept that we are on an evolutionary journey and we go forward in that light knowing that we will be guided. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service. We have the opportunity to share love offerings, our gifts, and our ties. Invite you to take whatever your gift may be and imbue it. Imbue it with the idea of paradox. As you give, so shall you receive. You see, in the Edemic mind, it's as I get, then I'll give. But see, that's not the way it works. That's not spiritual law. If you'll please join me with our prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. Thank you for the paradox. Because it keeps our soul really fresh in the truth we know. You can go to unityway.com and get our physical address. Or you can go to unityway.com and do an electronic donation. And I give thanks because it's through your ties, gifts, and love offerings that allow us to put this video up. That allow us truly to be unity, this church on the hill. May we truly share that light wherever we go. And we just say, thank you, God. The prayer for protection. Again, this is kind of paradoxical. If we're divine beings, why do we need protection? But again, we're living in a third dimensional world and we're here to expand. We're here to experience life. May we say this prayer of or for protection, not only for us today, but for all humanity and for all the world. 
If you'll join me, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, wherever we are, God is and all is well. Think about some paradoxes this week and see how you can expand your own soul's consciousness and bring more light and wisdom and understanding and zeal into your life. I'll see you next Sunday. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.